Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Ten for the Chairman. Uh, there's been a bit of a break because I've been over in Europe, um, mostly doing Squadron 42 stuff, but also uh, stuff to do with our um, sort of engine and procedural planet stuff over in Germany. Um, and now I'm back in uh, LA for a couple of weeks, enjoying uh, you know the nice uh, weather here in Santa Monica and being home for a few weeks before uh, heading back in um, a very short order back uh, to Europe. So anyway, it's um, good to be um, here in front of the camera. Uh, it's been a while, so uh, hopefully you guys have missed me a bit. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, and um, uh, I'm here going to answer 10, uh, what we call 10 for the chairman, where I take 10 questions from uh, the subscribers out there. Um, the subscribers are a subset of our community that contribute money every month to allow us to do additional uh, sort of content, community-driven content. So the video shows this show, Around the Verse, um, Bug Smashers, all that kind of stuff. As well as uh, we do this monthly magazine called Jump Point that is usually somewhere between 50 and 70 pages that has uh, behind the scenes um, sort of uh, breakdown of say how we maybe designed or built a ship, uh, game systems that we're working on, um, sort of lore updates, so sort of focuses on different companies or systems inside the universe of Star Citizen. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really great read. Um, and uh, then there's other uh, sort of elements that we sort of reward subscribers for helping support us doing the enhanced community content that we do for all you guys, which uh, you know, I think is, um, you know, is great. It's one of the special things that makes Star Citizen unique, the fact that we sort of put all this effort and uh, are able to sort of share a lot of what we're doing on a weekly basis with you guys. Um, you know, my opinion, it's more than I've seen anyone else really uh, do at this level. Um, so thank you for supporting, and that's why I take the, uh, the, the 10 questions um, and um, uh, that kind of stuff. By the way, here's our nice little um, coffee cappuccino cups that we have here. Mm, very good. And, um, and we had, I was going to show you some really great coasters, speaking of uh, coffee or hot drinks. Um, which is from uh, An Anres uh, Industries, uh, AKA Anres, AKA me. <laughs> um, so I don't know if he wants his name read out um, on the show, but he sent these awesome coasters, uh, so awesome actually, that um, Aaron, my brother, who, was, uh, who just left this morning, um, earlier this week says, yeah, oh, I like these, I'm gonna take these, and I thought he was joking, but then when I went looking for them for the show, uh, they're missing. Um, so all I have left is this little, uh, nice little uh, kind of rocket ship, uh, I would say it's kind of like a tea cozy, but not really a tea cozy. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you, um, Anarez. They're really cool. In fact, they're so cool that my brother stole them from me. Um, and let's see, we've got some other stuff here, which is uh, kind of some of our uh, new patches. Kind of cool. They were threatening to sew this on my black shirt here. Um, but there you go. So anyway, I was going to have more cool stuff to show you, but like I said, Aaron stole it. Um, so let's, uh, let's get to the questions uh, and uh, get going from there. Deathstroke asks, we have recently been told that Drake ships do ha not have ejection seats. Can you settle a big debate? How does this square with the permadeath concepts and vision and death of a spaceman? On the Drake side, uh, you know, one of the ideas is the sort of Drake ships are sort of um, kind of like we sort of envision them a little like the Russian sort of military hardware where it's like very rugged, it's functional, uh, but doesn't have a lot of uh, extra bells and whistles, say like the say US uh, sort of military equipment would do. And so one of the things that generally uh, you wouldn't necessarily get on a Drake ship would be all the extra stuff like the ejection seat, especially in something like uh, the Cutlass, uh, but even more recently the, the Buccaneer, and that sort of enables them to have, uh, you know, deliver value elsewhere, like in, you know, uh, you know, better value for your money in terms of the weapons you get for the price and all the rest of the stuff. Uh, in terms of death of a spaceman, I mean, the thing to, to, um, to sort of remember about death of a spaceman is that even though, say, you're the, you get blown up, like if you're, ship, you're in the ship and it gets blown up, that doesn't mean that you're dead instantly because the way that um, sort of we look at the game is that it's sort of lives that you have, right? So um, you essentially if you eject potentially or get an escape pod you can get out there and you um, you know potentially can sort of save your life but any one of your characters before you sort of move on to your net you know you have to move you you put your old character away and move on to your new one which whether it would be a designated next to kin or a whole new character you decide you want to 
move to, um, in that particular case, um, you'll have quite a few opportunities. You'll have more than one case where you sort of die, so to speak, in, in space, and then you'll sort of wake up in the med bay, and they sort of patch you up, and then they'll only be able to do that so many times before um, obviously your body will sort of give out. And that's kind of the idea of death of the spaceman, is it sort of like um, taking a little bit of sort of the, the, the life mechanic from you know, the good old days of early game design, uh, and that's sort of the, about the number of times that you can sort of be brought back by modern uh, sort of medical technology, and then after that you sort of have to, you, you know, your old character has passed away and you move on to a new character. Uh, so obviously it's, a, it's a, you know, a little bit more risky um, in a Drake ship than, say, a ship that has uh, something like an uh, ejection sheet. Although, you know, you are able to get out of, whether it's the Cutlass or whether it would be even a Buccaneer, you should be able to get out just like you can get out um, and, um, you know, EVA out of uh, certain ships like the Hornet and stuff. It's just a matter of you may not be able to get out quite as quickly. Um, so uh, you'll just have to be aware of that. But I think the people that fly Drake ships um, are so good they don't need to always have to eject. Back in World War One, they didn't give um, you know some of the airmen uh, parachutes because you know they should they they should be so good they didn't need to actually parachute out. And I think that would probably be how I would think of uh, a, a Drake pilot would think of themselves as. Um, so there you are. I hope that kind of answered the question. But we do definitely want to have uh, this sense of sort of different. Uh, design, design criteria between our different ships. And so, you know, some ones have got, you know, more frills and more features, but then they cost more, some have less, uh, you know, so in some ways uh, could be considered, you know, better value for money or easier to replace or easier to fix, and that would definitely be Drake. Next question comes from uh, Glorian Hale, who says, we are a Belgian French organization and uh, are really big fans of your work. Thank you very much. Uh, several members would like to visit this year's GamesCon in Germany, and we know there will be a stand for Star Citizen. The question is, could we expect some kind of event, or is nothing planned during GamesCon? So in this GamesCon, uh, we're not doing the huge sort of like event that we did the last few GamesCons. Uh, you know, we had the venue where I think we, we could put about, you know, about 2,000 people joining. So um, for this year, there was some uh, like issue in lining up the, the, the venue we wanted to use. Uh, and obviously, if you remember last year, it was uh, pretty hot, and uh, you know we were actually quite worried about the fact that it was getting too hot, and um, you know whether uh, you know we. Luckily, we didn't really have any issues, um, but we were kind of worried about people's uh, health and safety because it was so packed and it was so hot. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we won't be doing things during Gamescom this year. So we're definitely going to have uh, several pop-up events. So if you guys remember, uh, you know, last few years we've done this sort of beer garden event. Uh, which we've uh, you know done in the sort of uh, Park Hyatt's uh, beer garden out front by the river, and I'm sure we'll be doing something like that again, uh, as well as uh, one or two other events. I know the sort of community team have been sort of talking about um, sort of having these sort of pop-up events, and then we're also going to have a much more involved uh, stand on the show floor than last year. So we're going to have kind of a uh, kind of fun-themed. Um, uh, space and uh, so we'll have people on hand and we'll be sort of showing and talking uh, various parts of the game. We'll probably be um, showing and teasing some new stuff that's going to be coming up. Uh, we're definitely going to be showing some cool stuff at Gamescon uh, to uh, press and we'll probably have some element of that um, shown on the show floor as well as allowing people to get hands on and play uh, the current stable build. So it definitely will be worth coming to Gamescom. We're going to have some cool stuff there. Um, you know, I'll be there. A lot of uh, a lot of the other uh, folks will be there too. Um, so we'd love to see you. So um, you know, come visit us. It's always a it's always a big thing for us, and we are definitely going to be showing some stuff that I think you'll be um, hopefully pretty excited about. So there you go. All right. Next question comes from Aragorn BH, who says, "Let's say a player locked their ship and left on an EVA or activity, which will put them out of sight of their property. Would any kind of notification on their Moby Glass alert?" Then that a pirate was attempting to disable a locked door and loot their ship. Um, yes, so no, definitely. So we're actually at one of the design objectives that people are working on now that we've sort of got persistence in is the whole idea of um, sort of um, control locking safety on your ship. Um, so you know, because uh, you know, right now you can just 
fly up someone else's ship and open its back door and go inside, which uh, you know, obviously doesn't make a vast amount of sense, especially when we have sort of persistent ships and there's real value to them. Um, so you know, one of the, the, the next stages of stuff will be to sort of put the kind of security systems in place. This partly comes with this item 2.0 stuff that we've talking about where uh, you can control various items. Um, uh, you know, an item would be a door, an airlock, or, and you can sort of lo lock things down, a shutter or open up for a friend of yours to arrive. Um, and then it comes with that is other levels of boarding mechanic, like so how you would break into a ship um, if you want to get into it and someone's locked it up. So, um, you know, whether it's like hacking uh, the lock or blowing open a door. So all that is sort of in um, the early stages of getting uh, fleshed out and then will get implemented. And of course, part of that would also uh, involve notification to your Moby Glass if you're, say, EVAing up somewhere else. And within, you know, obviously within a reasonable amount of range, it would tell you, hey, look, someone's trying to break into your ship and you'd have an opportunity to come back and check it out. Um, so there you go. So what you asked is there. Next question comes from GeForce, who asks, the monthly studio reports have been a fantastic resource for company-wide developments across the spectrum of Star Citizen as a project. Other than persistence and the recent focus on Squadron 42 development, what is the biggest development challenge preventing rudimentary versions of the exploration, cargo, mining, and economy mechanics to be implemented in the PU slash PTU builds? And would it be possible to see targeted or focused updates on these specific mechanics in the future? Yes, so um, these are all things that we're focusing on. So 2.4 um, you know, has just come out. So that has persistence, which is a, a pretty big thing because that just means that the items that you sort of buy or, or potentially find uh, will stay around and uh, longer term your know, health and damage and wear and tear to your items and all the rest of the stuff will also persist. Um, and you can buy and sell things like uh, clothes now. And we're just going to be sort of opening up and expanding more of, more of that. And then the other big thing that we're doing is, uh, you know, we're working quite hard on having uh, it's what we, Stanton system that we're going to put in as a system, you know, of massive scale. So, uh, you know, I think the system itself is going to be in our scaled down version about a billion kilometers across, which is pretty insanely big. Um, and we will be, um, you know, in, the not immediate feature, but definitely um, this year, uh, we will have the Stanton system there with procedural planets, and that's kind of one of our focuses. So right now what we're doing is we're focusing on uh, the procedural planet um, sort of tech and work, and also the uh, fundamental things that we have to do to the underlying engine tech to allow us to um, simulate a uh, system that is that big. So we're already simulating a pretty massive play area, but the full star system is much, 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 much bigger than what you get even now in Crusader, and uh, is going to it has you know vast amounts of um, sort of objects or entities if you want to call them. So you know you probably would have noticed that the performance from 2.3 to 2.4 has degraded a little bit, and that has sort of been an ongoing trend because we've been adding more things in, more AI, um, you know, more things. So like if you go to Port Alasar, you can buy items in the shops, and you also have you know various, uh, you know, pick up uh, rec, uh, you know, like things you can pick up at recs around Yeller and all that. And so essentially, um, uh, you know, the core of CryEngine is, was never built to, to sort of simulate this many items and objects. And we've had a long-term refactor uh, that we've been working on. Uh, the item 2.0 that keeps on getting mentioned is one of the core one, part of it, but we're basically refactoring the way the whole entity system updates, um, we're refactoring the fundamental, so we've done a lot of top level changing on top of the Cry network, but it's just not going to be good enough to handle systems this big and uh, this much data going back and forth. So we've long had a full rewrite of everything in Cry network on the table and we've been working on it. Um, and now with what happened and what you could see on 2.4 and the frame rates and everything, it's just clear that we're sort of at the, the limit of what the current engine will sort of handle without these new systems that we've been working on for quite a while sort of coming online. So the engineering team on um, the overall projects across all the studios um, have uh, you know, a good portion of them being what we call ring fenced. And so rather than you know, spending a lot of time iterating, fixing issues or bugs on 2.4 or 2.41 or 2.5, we've been working um, towards getting everything sort of in place for when we bring out 
uh, the bigger system and procedural planets, which uh, you know internally on our release uh, schedule that will be 2.7, but I'm not giving you an exact date on that because um, as you can see with 2.4, some of the bigger things take longer than some of the more sort of simple content updates. Um, but we're sort of working at um, pulling all that together. And when that's in place uh, with some of the systems and some of the messaging and organization stuff we've got in work, which is also pretty cool that um, longer term uh, we'll be rolling out later this year uh, that I think will uh, also make the game much better in terms of uh, coordinating with your friends and groups and organizations. Um, we will have the foundation in place to really sort of accelerate on things like, you know, sort of the cargo and the mining and going about and sort of hiring other people to, you know, escort you or defend you or, you know, take someone out. Um, so that's all sort of working at, at pace. And then in sort of the short term, we're sort of working at um, sort of adding some content in terms of uh, some new locations. So in the next uh, big drop we have, um, we're going to have a separate um, area that when you're an outlaw, or a, you, know, a, uh, you know, someone on the wrong side of the law, you have your own place that you spawn and, you know, you all, so it's almost like we're going to have two factions in the 2.5 release, um, which is the sort of outlaw base and then Port Alisar will be the two main spawning places and we're going to start to uh, sort of build that up and there's some extra stuff that gets added there and um, you know we're going to have some other gameplay that rolls out that's on the sort of kind of smaller side but then the huge sort of system expansion starts with 2.7. Um, won't have all the locations because there's a lot of stuff to be there but everything will be sort of in uh, you know placeholder set up in 2.7 and then then we start working at like fleshing and finishing out Stanton system. So that's our goal. Our goal is to get the Stanton system fleshed out to the fidelity um, that we want in Star Citizen uh, for you know playing the game with the way we imagine it at the amount of like insane detail you can go from you know basically it's that pupil to planet detail where you can get right down there and you're walking around on this huge planet and the detail on the ground is like something you I promise you it's something you have not seen on a, uh, a proper fully procedural uh, planet. Um, that's fully three, you know, like a proper sphere. Like you'll see the planet, and you keep going. It's all completely seamless. You get down, you get right down, you get down and see the little rocks on the on the ground. Um, and I haven't seen anyone else be able to do that. So we are going to do that. That's going to be very cool. I think you guys will like it. Um, so that's coming on down the road. Uh, again, can't really uh, give exact dates because uh, you know some of these things take. Uh, longer than we would all like. Um, but um, this year is the plan, so, uh, so stay tuned. And you know, that's another reason to uh, come to Gamescom because we may have some stuff to show. Next question comes from uh, Fireball, who asks, uh, the E3 Expo has just wrapped up. Did you see anything that made you say, wow, uh, what do you think of how big space games are now? Uh, <laughs> well, it's actually kind of cool because uh, there's loads of space games now. I, I never knew everyone wanted to do space games as, uh, as, uh, as, as much as they seem to do now. And so um, it's kind of fun because you know, when I started this and uh, when we did the crowdfunding campaign uh, for Star Citizen, everyone said, no one wants, the, no one wants space games. Uh, you know, and you know, now you're seeing it all the way up to the biggest mainstream uh, title, like, you know, uh, Call of Duty uh, Infinite Warfare. And, you know, generally, you know, the you know, new Mass Effect stuff look cool. Um, you know, I always like the Mass Effect. The other thing I saw, which isn't sci-fi, but uh, Battlefield uh, 1 looked very cool to me because I like World War 1. So I'm kind of partial to World War 1 and uh, things like the Red Baron. And uh, so it was kind of cool to see that. So I'm sure I'll play it because I'm kind of a bit of a Battlefield fan. Um, but, um, you know, I think uh, uh, you guys will be seeing some stuff from us on the FPS stuff um, in the not too distant future. And um, I think you'll like it because there's some stuff we haven't shown or shared where we've made some uh, really nice breakthroughs in how uh, our FPS uh, sort of movement and mechanics work. And uh, it's playing really, really nice and smooth internally. So we're going to figure out a way to get you guys that to just sort of be able to play that and have fun with it. Um, so you never know that long rumored dead thing may have may appear again, we'll see. Um, okay, uh, on to the next thing uh, from uh, Lyowin, uh, who asks, I feel it's some time ago now since we last heard about Nyx. Back then it sounded like it was very close to being finished. Is Nyx still in the works? And if so, when will we see it? Ah, uh -huh. well, that's a good question. So, um, you are definitely going to see Nyx. Um, we are going to put it in, uh, in the short term in the Stanton system, so you will see the landing uh, environments like Nix um, all uh, debuting with 
the uh, procedural uh, planet sort of iteration of Stanton. So that's kind of what we're, we've been working on, which is one of the reasons why uh, you haven't really seen much updates. The, the, the landing area and the environment is done, uh, but now it's all about integrating into the big, huge star system and the whole, uh, you know, how it gets integrated into uh, the planetary tech and how that streams in when you get, as you arrive to it. So it's all seamless, there's no loading screens. Um, so we're all actually quite hard at work um, doing that. So I think that's uh, what you'll be seeing when uh, you'll, you'll basically see Nix with uh, 2.7. Um, and uh, then we'll just carry on to expand beyond that. You know, uh, we won't have Arc Corp in with 2.7, but you know, not too far past that. Then you'll actually have Arc Corp that you'll go and land on the planet on the planet in the system, not have to go to a separate load screen. So the whole goal is um, to get to you just enter the PU or the mini PU and you fly around between landing locations, whether they're on planets, uh, whether they're space stations and you do your missions, you trade, you make some money, grade your ship. And you know, that's, that's the core um, game loop, of course, that you know, we've, we've talked about with Star Citizen. And uh, so we're, we're working towards that all sort of coming together um, by the end of this year. The next question comes from The Tick, who asks, will AI opponents display some aspect of self-preservation or can we expect them all to fight to the death? No, they will definitely. So like one of the goals, um, we actually, I was in Germany for a week before I just came back here this week actually. And I had, uh, so you may have seen some pictures from uh, Bar Citizen and Frankfurt and Tony was actually over there, uh, you know, as well as myself. And uh, there are actually quite a few of the people we brought over from the UK. And we had a big sort of um, AI uh, mission um, sort of technical session. So we're in the uh, implementation stages of this sort of grand design. You know, Tony's mentioned um, subsumption before, but subsumption also sort of works all the way up in sort of the meta um, group AI. So like, you know, organ you know, organization of teams, organization of groups. Um, above that would be sort of missions, above that would be campaigns, uh, and it all ties into sort of uh, both stuff that we would do for Squadron 42, but also stuff in the sort of dynamic universe of Star Citizen. And so uh, we were all together sort of kind of on the sort of final lockdown, the uh, final part of the design and sort of get everybody off and running uh, to finish off the aspects to go beyond that. So um, you know, we're, we're basically unifying all the AI and the mission stuff into one, one system um, that has different levels and scopes and, and sort of knows how to talk amongst itself very well. And that will allow us to do things like the self-preservation, have much more uh, seemingly intelligent AI because it isn't just about sort of the tactical application of the situation like, okay, I'm in a dogfight, I need to win, or uh, you know, I'm in a, a firefight in, uh, you know, in, on the ground and I need to find cover. It's about, you know, yes, you have all that, but then you have sort of the bigger goals like, okay, what's my objective? in this area. Okay, what's my, you know, what's my goal today? What's my long-term goal as a person? What's my long-term goal as an, as, a, as an organization? And so that's all what we've been working on. And definitely part of that will be to have um, you know, self-preservation and you know, various things like morale and all the rest of the stuff uh, that you would get. Okay, next question comes from N Trepid, uh, N, uh, N T R E P I capital D. A lot of progress has been made and knowledge gained with CryEngine during Star Citizen's development. Is this something you guys will eventually pass on to other developers through white papers, articles, et cetera? I would say, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we've got a lot that we've been working on. Um, I think, you know, some, uh, so, you know, on some aspects, some of like our art pipeline has already been uh, shared. Uh, I know that, you know, um, Nathan Dearsley uh, did a lot with, um, you know, we've, we've got a whole pipeline that involves sort of custom normals and POM mapping that sort of allows us to build uh, the spaceships to the level of fidelity and detail you see without like absolutely crushing the amount of uh, faces we need. Um, but yes, we'll definitely be sharing this. I can, I can sort of see uh, talks happening. I know Ali, uh, Alistair Brown, who's our head of graphics, did a talk at GDC um, you know, the other year. And we'll probably be doing that uh, down the road. I'm pretty sure once We've got the uh, procedural planet and all that kind of stuff going. We may do some presentation on that. Um, but yeah, uh, longer term, uh, we would be you know, quite keen to sort of share uh, sort of our learning and knowledge. It's how everyone in the game business sort of evolves and advances. And I'm quite keen to sort of support other efforts for you know, developers to sort of share information and work on open source libraries. 
um, because uh, you know ultimately it's I don't think it's just about the tech I think it's about you know how you apply the tech and uh, you know the gameplay you do and the art you craft and so the tech is one little aspect and of course every game has different requirements so even with the same base tech like Unreal or CryEngine or something the demands of the individual games are very different like the demand of our game is very different than say uh, sort of straight ahead sort of single player um, sort of shooter or something like that or, or like a crisis game a crisis game has very different demands than say a Star Citizen game so yes uh, we definitely would want to be doing that Okay, uh, next question comes from Fon Kin, who asks, I've been playing in the PTU and it's really exciting to see things come together. Cool, thank you. Yes, it's actually kind of very cool to see a lot of videos that people post and see the various amounts of play they do. And um, you know, I just have impatience because I know there's a lot of other stuff that we have in the works that will make all that much better. Um, I'm wondering if the Hangar module and the Universe module will be combined to be more immersive. In other words, when I walk out of my Revel and York Hangar and find myself in a spaceport such as Al Alasar, where I, where I can then requisition a ship to fly. Yes, that is 100% our goal. Um, so for me, I, I talked a little earlier in the show, but for me, the goal is to get the game to the point uh, which I'm very confident we can do this year, um, where we're not going to a hangar module or we're not going to Art Corp as a separate module. It's all just one that we, we go between these different uh, locations all in the universe. Um, so, you know, the setup may be slightly different um, than it is right now in the hangar uh, module that you have, but it's already changed with 2.4 with the, with the sort of uh, integration of persistence because we don't have the same dynamic hangars that we used to. Um, so that's all going to sort of change. But yeah, our goal is to sort of, um, you know, be able to have a hangar on a landing location and you can uh, go down and visit it and then call up your ship to be on the landing pad or perhaps the door of your hangar opens up and you fly out into the universe. So that is uh, definitely um, on our plans and goals. Okay, all right, last question comes from Vacation who asks, the Vandal Harvesters look quite menacing and I was wondering what is their planned role in the verse since planetary landings has entered the picture? Well, the Vandal Harvesters in the fiction um, and uh, sort of uh, Squadron 40, Two in episode two or so, they make uh, more of a appearance. But um, you know, they essentially—I mean, the Vandal go from world to world, and uh, you know, they don't necessarily sort of um, build as much as take. So the harvesters are sort of harvesting resources from the the, the worlds they're sort of conquering or destroying, and uh, that's sort of turned into the you know. Use, utilized by the Vandal war machine to make their fleet bigger and make their fleet stronger. Um, so we definitely will probably have them uh, appearing and obviously Vandal appearing in the biggest star citizen when we get to the sort of uh, worlds that the Vandal uh, are kind of, uh, or the systems that the Vandal you know, are present in or are threatening. Um, so, uh, you know, and planetary landings and procedural planets are, uh, you know, a big part of the game and they actually in, will also uh, be part of Squadron 42. So, um, you know, we're, 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 we're planning and utilizing the technology, uh, not just in Star Citizen, but in Squadron 42 for some of the locations you'll visit, uh, just because the idea of sort of seamless um, flying around from, you know, you can see off in the distance a little dot and then you fly up to it and it turns into a moon and you can fly down onto it and go right down to a gas refining facility and then fight pirates there or whatever you will be doing. Um, it's amazing just to have that sense of scale and scope, but then get in close and it's all there and there's no tricks where there's a loading screen or there's suddenly clouds in your way and, shoo, and then all of a sudden we've streamed in a new level, none of that. It's all there. It's all there in, the, in one coherent world, all in the same sort of 64-bit vector space. Uh, and you know the planets or the planetoids, because you know obviously we use it also for moons or whatever. Um, they, uh, you know, it's you. I mean, if I can see it here, I can land here, and the gravity works all the way around it. And you could literally walk all the way around the planet or fly all the way around it. And so you know, with all uh, ground vehicles, or you know, um, we're um, you know just um, and, you know announced and um, um, did this. Uh, Dragonfly, Dragonfly uh, sail, which is also sort of a space bike, but also a ground bike, and it's good for zipping around there. And uh, it's going to be super cool. So we're going to be using that um, for everything, including Squadron 42. And um, in the in the uh, PU, I would say that the big difference between what what I was thinking that we were going to do a few years ago and what we can do now is there's going to be so much more 
gameplay and content in individual systems because we can literally have every moon and every planet be something you can fly to, land on, walk around, move around, mine things on, search for things, rescue people on, get jumped by pirates on. I mean, so, the, so there's not just potential for missions spawning in space, there's potential for all sorts of kind of missions to spawn down on planets, just like there'd be missions that could spawn on space stations or missions spawning on sort of, uh, you know, space wrecks hanging out on asteroid fields. And so the, the amount of sort of gameplay that's opened up in, this, in the same area that we have is like, it's exponentially more gameplay, and it's really, really, really cool. Um, and the Vandal Harvesters could be just part of that. Uh, all right, that is um, the last of the 10 questions in uh, 10 for the chairman. Hopefully, uh, some of the answers have uh, been informative to you. Uh, I'm you know, really quite excited. I'm doing a lot of traveling because I spend a lot of time uh, between all the studios now, um, and obviously a lot of time in Europe because we have uh, uh, you know, two thirds of our um, uh, developers are actually in Europe now. So um, between the UK and the Wimslow office and the Frankfurt office, quite a bunch, and as well as being back here and then uh, also in Austin occasionally. And um, it's cool to see everyone work on all this stuff. There's lots of stuff that everyone's working on. Um, it's slowly coming together. I wish it was coming together a bit faster, but um, it's great. And we won't be able to do it without all your guys' support. So thank you very much for. Uh, backing us, um, you know, it's amazing to be here uh, almost four years on, uh, building something that I don't think anyone could ever have dreamed uh, could happen or be built at this scale. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think there's any publisher out there that would fund something this crazy or this ambitious, and uh, you guys have, so thank you very much. Um, and thank you to everyone that subscribed because you allow us to do this extra amount of community content and we appreciate that. And I would say that on a longer term basis, we're sort of looking always to sort of see how we can improve the community content. Um, so we're, you know, you know, everything else. You always got to make things different and better and reinvent yourself as you go along. So uh, we'll also be trying to uh, do things on that level to maybe change it up and add uh, some more information and behind the scenes stuff there. Um, and uh, anyway, I'm just generally excited by, uh, well, everything we're working on, and I'm um, looking forward to uh, sharing uh, stuff with you uh, at GamesCon and uh, then later on CitizenCon, and um, then seeing you, what you guys do inside the, the world. It's already cool seeing a lot of the 2.4 videos uh, that have been out there. So um, thanks a lot very much, and uh, I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching um, 10 for the Chairman. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, see more episodes, go here. If you guys would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and always keep up to date with all our video content, go here. And uh, if you guys would like to watch episodes of Around the Verse, go here, please. And I will see you in the verse. <laughs>